Hi, my name is Mark Beckwith. I am the retired Bishop of the Diocese of Newark. I currently live in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, and I'm gonna be talking mostly about a book that I published this year called Seeing the Unseen Beyond Paradigms, Pre uh, Prejudices, and Party Lines. And the origin of the book comes from a story in my time in Newark. Uh, when I arrived there uh, in 2007, I noticed that there was an outdoor soup line, and I paid attention to it for the first few days because I had started soup kitchens, worked in shelters, a big part of my ministry. But after a few weeks, I didn't pay attention to it anymore. Why? Because I was on the fourth floor of our office looking out across this new diocese to me, seeing its congregations, its people, its concerns, its hopes, its problems, all of that. And so the many men, and they were mostly men, who came to this soup line next door faded into the background. They were sort of foreground to the Passaic River, which lay just beyond. About two or three years in, a priest in the diocese came up to me and asked, what goes on next door? And I said, well, there's a soup kitchen. There's a soup line. She said, let's go. And so we did. And not to serve, but to have conversation with the many men who were there. And what I'm embarrassed to admit <clears throat> is that I discovered and I learned from the people who ran the soup line that there were 500 men who came every day, 250 in the morning, 250 at noon, and I didn't see them. I didn't see them. And as we had conversations we, uh, and developed relationships, I remember after the first debriefing, the priest who encouraged me, encouraged us to go over uh, to have this, uh, this encounter, pointed her finger in my chest and she said, don't you dare go just once. And so I didn't. And I went regularly, uh, sometimes for a brief bit of time, sometimes for a, a longer period of time. And in those many engagements with these guys next door, I built some relationships. And I heard their stories. And I learned from many of them that they lived with a level of courage and faith with, that was never tested to that degree in me. And uh, one man who I developed a, a deep personal relationship with, he was my age. He had gone to Boston University. I don't know why he didn't finish, although I have some ideas why he didn't finish. Uh, and we would talk with each other. and We share with one another uh, what we were reading. And he told me he was reading James Joyce. And I looked at him with a quizzical eye, said, I, I find that hard to believe because Nobody can read James Joyce. I mean, I've tried to read James Joyce. I can't get through James Joyce. He said, no, oh, I'm reading James Joyce. I love James Joyce. He said, Mark, what are you reading? And I said, I just finished this book called Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. And uh, he says, the American dream is built for people like me on the backs of people like you, somebody who was African-American. And he looked me deep in the eye and he said, you didn't know that. And uh, I said, well, I did know that, but not to the level that he did. And so, again, developed this relationship, and, and uh, it was said, and it was very clear that these men who came, uh, many of them were homeless. Some of them had lived in single-room occupancy dwellings, uh, but they were all poor in one way or another. And it made me reflect on the notion of the poor, which Jesus refers to many, many times, uh, creating a category. And as I reflected on people who were identified as poor, they don't have names and they don't have stories. And we keep them distant from ourselves and make it very difficult for people who are financially poor to join into the rest of the community with the rest of us. And it reminded me of a conversation I heard or a lecture I heard when I was in college uh, nearly 50 years ago. Bill Russell, the iconic uh, center for the Boston Celtics, arguably one of the best basketball players of all time, came and spoke to a college audience. And he talked about going through an airport once and a woman came up to him and said, oh, you're a basketball player. And he said to her very graciously and clearly, no, madam, I'm a man who plays basketball. His humanity came first. That was what was most important. And as I continued my ongoing journey next door to the soup line, uh, I realized that there are all sorts of impediments 
uh, that we have received along the way that make it difficult for us to fully identify someone in their humanity. <laughs>